Content is king in gaming nowadays. Games are loaded with DLCs and expansions. They're marketed based on their completion time. Telling the audience a game will take 80 hours to finish is looked at as a selling point. Open world games are getting bigger and bigger with more quests and random things to do. And it brings up the question, does longer mean better? Do we get better gaming experiences out of tightly packed short narratives or long games filled with content? Has the consumer been tricked into believing longer time investment is better value for your dollar? Let's chat. One of my favorite games of all time is Shadow of the Colossus. I think it's on a very short list of games that I would call perfect. The storytelling, music, atmosphere. Shadow of the Colossus explores some interesting moral questions in the midst of it all. This game's gone on to directly inspire games like Dark Souls and Breath of the Wild, which those games have branched out to have countless games take inspiration from them. Shadow of the Colossus is clearly an important game, but in terms of content, there's none. You get this desolate open world to freely explore all you want, but no matter where you go, you won't find anything to do. Shadow of the Colossus gives off the perception that you are free to go as you please, but the game is very linear. There's no side quests. As far as collectibles, there's very minimal. The game was purposely built this way to give you a sense of eeriness and isolation. They want you to progress and follow the story, but if you choose to stray off and find something else to do, you'll just be left with nothingness. And that nothingness somehow adds more to the game than any secondary objectives could possibly imagine. The constant silence and lack of life just builds on the atmosphere that matches perfectly with the story and ideas that are being presented. This game deals with loss, what lengths people are willing to go to for the ones that they love. It explores the idea of people being willing to do bad things for a good outcome, and how we may not really care about bad things things if they don't directly affect our lives. Those concepts are all pretty dark and moody at their core, so to have this vast empty world where the only signs of life are yourself and your horse, it blends atmosphere and story in a way I've never seen another game do as well. I've sunk well over 100 hours into Shadow of the Colossus across the original PS2 version and the PlayStation 4 remake, but you don't have to. The entire game can be completed in under 10 hours by even the most non novice of gamers, and yet being such a short game to today's standards, it still stands out as one of the most memorable gaming experiences for myself. I won't spoil anything in case anyone plans on playing it at some point, but allowing yourself to jump into this world and view things from different perspectives, you'll see the real genius that was put into this idea. And now let's transition to the other side of the coin. This past year I played through Assassin's Creed Origins for the first time, and this was me revisiting the Assassin's Creed franchise since Black Flag came out, so it's been a long time. Now I'm a big fan of ancient history and mythology, so Origins felt like a good place for me to get back back into this series, and I was right on that. Being able to explore all these ancient Egyptian places was exactly what I was looking for from these games. Walking around the populated streets of Alexandria and Cyrene, being able to scale the pyramids of Giza. Every time I stepped into a new place, I was taken back by how cool it was to explore a recreation of these historical sites. The main story was Good, nothing that blew me away in terms of storytelling, but it was still an enjoyable experience. But once I finished the story, I wanted to complete as many things as I could because there is so much to do. You've got fortress and military encampments to take over, there's mini bosses that roam around the world, collectibles like gear and papyrus, over a hundred side quests, treasure chests, war elephants, puzzles. To complete everything could easily take somebody over 80 hours. And even once that that's done, there's still plenty of other things you can continue to repeat like the chariot races or arena battles. But by hour 30 of me playing Origins, I was bored. I realized I was just doing the same thing over and over again and it just wasn't enjoyable to me. The most fun part of the entire game was simply the exploration, seeing all these cool lived in places. Outside of that, a game that's loaded with tons of things to do 
just felt too repetitive for me to even care. However, that sightseeing was enough for me to justify purchasing the game, and I'm glad I did play through it. But I find the comparison of Assassin's Creed and Shadow of the Colossus really interesting, because both of these games are open world games, and in one hand you have this modern marvel of beautiful visuals combined with what feels like endless amounts of content, a game you could sink 100 hours into if you wanted. On the other hand, you've got a 20-year-old game with absolutely nothing to do other than complete the story, a game that could be completed in one simple session, and yet the one that seems inferior on paper is significantly better to me, and it's not even close. And I think it all comes down to experience. All of the bloated additives in Origins don't actually add to the quality of the game for me. They don't heighten my experience, they just increase my playtime. Whereas Shadow of the Colossus lacking those things forces me to focus on the elements that truly matter and make my experience more impactful. Adding more collectibles and side quests to the game wouldn't make Shadow of the Colossus more enjoyable to me. Instead, I actually think they would lean more towards taking away from the genius in it. When you think of some of your favorite open world games, think of all the things you can do in them and ask yourself, if some of those things were gone, would the game be worse? For example, when it comes to side quests, you go up to an NPC who tells you to go to a specific place and kill some monster. Go here and retrieve this item, then report back. And now you're doing different variations of the same quest 30 or 40 times throughout the game. Do those things actually add to the game being good for you? Now I know this sounds like I'm hating on long games, but that's not the case. I love grindy games, but I also think it's important to look at how that grind is executed. Because in a lot of cases, it feels like games just add content for the sake of doing it, but it doesn't add enjoyment. It feels like the industry standard for AAA titles has shifted towards this mindset of long-lasting stories where we value quantity over quality. And I think it comes down to how we value media at this point. This idea is bigger than just games. Everything is very fast-paced in entertainment today where something big is here for a short time and then we're on to the next one. An artist can drop an album, you listen to it a bunch for a couple of weeks, and then you're looking for the next thing. A new TV show comes out, you binge it all in a couple of days, and now you're stuck waiting a year for the next season. We get so much media today that people choose not to cling on to things for long and it kind of devalues the product. The streaming era has been around long enough at this point that there are adults who have never owned a piece of music. Adults who have never owned a movie. Why would I pay $20 for an album on iTunes or a copy of my favorite movie when I can spend $10 a month on Spotify or Netflix and I have unlimited access to those things along with an expansive catalog of others? The younger people where this is all that they know, they see more value in having access to more things, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but I do think it plays a part in devaluing media as a whole. And like every form of media, we've seen this spill over into gaming over the years as well. Games come and go quicker than ever before. The market is so competitive with so many titles out there that the value we put on a game has gone down. It's about feeling like you're getting your money's worth, and that's now measured by how long the game lasts. A person today would feel like they're getting ripped off spending $60 on a game that you can finish in 10 hours. Although prior to the past decade or so, that was kind of the standard. It was pretty common to complete a game in under 15 hours, whether you were paying $10 or $60 for the game. And that was never a criticism I really saw until recently. Like when Bioshock came out, for instance, I don't remember anyone saying that the game should have costed less because it was short, or that the game would have been better if it was longer. I talked about this idea in a TikTok a while back, and I remember a lot of the comments saying stuff along these lines where they feel like games should be priced based on how much playtime you can get out of it. Now granted, I would assume that a lot of those folks were younger kids because that's a very modern beliefs, so I don't fault them for thinking like that because that's just the world that they grew up in. But I think it's a weird idea that gaming is the only form of entertainment where people feel this way. This idea of the more you spend should equate to more time of entertainment. People don't go to concerts or sporting events and feel like their $200 ticket was money not well spent because the event should have been longer. You don't go to the movies and feel ripped off because the two hours wasn't long enough for the price of admission. It feels like this is strictly a 
gaming space thing and I can't really wrap my head around it because I've always been a firm believer that quality trumps quantity. My dollar's value is dictated by how well made the product is. But I also grew up in a different era where there wasn't really hundred hour games to play. Nowadays we have these titles which can be labeled forever games, games that are meant to be played permanently. Whether it be climbing the ranked ladders in a competitive game or grinding gear and events in a game like Path of Exile or Destiny. We have a lot of these forever games today, which has made a lot of people attach themselves to one or two games at a time. You're a Fortnite player. You're a Valorant player. Any gaming you do outside of your primary game is an afterthought, and it doesn't compare in playtime to what you invest into your main game. Now, I'm obviously generalizing here, and there's a lot of people who continue to play many games at the same time, but I do think this idea of maining a game for months or years at a time has become more and more common. And I think these forever games have put pressure on the industry to extend the playtimes of as many games as possible. We've seen enough data at this point to know that the initial Initial sales of video games is not where the real money's at. It's in-game transactions, cosmetics, bundles, stuff like that. If you can keep players playing, you can add these things in that will greatly improve profits. But it's kind of hard to make a single player game into something that people are going to want to play forever. It's got to have certain grind and replay factors that some genres or ideas just really struggle to implement. So instead of making a forever game, you just make it as long as you possibly can. Extend your stories, add in side missions, collectibles, achievements, Easter eggs. Put in as many things as possible that will keep a person wanting to come back so that they will make it their main game. And there's nothing objectively wrong with any of these things. Maining a game, playing forever games, there's nothing wrong with thinking games are better when they're longer. But don't let these companies trick you. Don't let them make you believe you're getting a better product just because there's a lot to do. Just because a game has a thousand NPCs to interact with and the largest open world ever put out doesn't mean you've got a good product. What makes those things add value? How do those features create something more interesting and meaningful than a game that manages with a lot less. Gaming, for me at least, will always be about the experience before anything else. If I'm purchasing a game, the playtime is the least relevant part of the equation. How many things I can do is not important. When I'm finished, I want to feel like my time was memorable. Whether that's achieved in 10 hours or a thousand hours, give me moments that will stick with me forever. Could the developers have made Shadow of the Colossus into a game that took 40 hours to complete while also continuing to be just as good or even better? I personally don't think so, but it is possible. But I also think it's possible that game that takes a hundred hours to complete could have been a better product had it not felt like 50 of those hours were repetitive fluff. Make my time matter. That's a good game to me. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe or don't.